think about solving one of these questions where you deal with a piece of metal heated up, dropped into water, and then it's asking you to find the specific heat capacity. The idea here is it's a mystery metal, you don't know what it is, so you calculate its specific heat capacity, match it against the list of, of the different heat capacities of metals, and then identify it. So let's go through how you would calculate the specific heat capacity of a hot piece of metal dropped into water. It, first of all, if you're going to do this, it's very important to understand what it is you're trying to solve for. So, yeah, let's get a piece of paper there to work with. If you're going to find specific heat capacity, understand that you are going to be working with this equation, Q equals mc delta t, where Q is energy, m is mass, c is specific heat capacity, and delta t is change in temperature. So we're solving for c. In order to do that, I need to rearrange the equation to get c. So if I'm going to solve for C, then what I'm going to do is take the original equation Q equals MC delta T and get C by itself by dividing away all the stuff that isn't C. So that is divide by M delta T, that way these cancel. And divide this by M delta T because whatever you do to one side you must do to the other. So that gives Q over M delta T equals C. Thus, I can find specific heat capacity by having Q energy divided by mass times the change in temperature. Now, if this is specific heat of the metal, then this must be energy of the metal, mass of the metal, delta T of the metal. So let's see, what do we have for this? If I want to find C of metal, that's got to equal Q of metal over mass of metal times delta T of metal. Let's get that up to where you can see it. So given that need, what we're going to do is say, okay, well, what do we have? Q of the metal. What's the energy of the metal? Not mentioned anywhere in the question. I'll say question mark. What's the mass of the metal? Given right there, 7.5 grams, 7.5 grams. What's the delta T of the metal? Well, delta T is final temperature minus initial temperature. Uh, let's see. The, temp the metal started at 200 degrees. And then, well, what happened to it? What's the final temperature? It doesn't say anywhere what the final temperature of the metal is at least not explicitly, but implicitly, yes, it does. If you drop hot metal into water, they wind up at the same temperature. So if the water rose to 30.8 degrees Celsius, the metal fell to 30.8 degrees Celsius. The water's final temperature is also the metal's final temperature. It is the same. So 30.8 degrees Celsius, metal's final temperature, minus 200.0 degrees Celsius, which is uh, the metal's initial temperature. And that gives a delta T which is negative, and that makes sense because the temperature of the metal went down from this to this, you should be seeing a negative delta T. That's more specifically, negative 169.2 degrees Celsius for the metal's delta T. So, all right, here's the problem. We can't solve this if we don't know what Q for the metal is. So since we don't know what Q for the metal is, since we don't know the energy change in the metal, we need to find a different way to work around this. So what can we do? We can say, look, if you have a container full of water, And if you into that container full of water here, let's make it uh, there's the water. Let's say you drop a hot piece of metal, symbolized by this red thing here. And if you drop that in, that metal, upon hitting the water, 
starts with a lot more energy than the water does because it's much hotter than the water. So what's going to happen is the metal will lose energy, but whatever the metal loses, the water gains. So all energy lost from the metal goes into the water. So energy lost from metal is equal to energy gained by the water. So whatever the Q value for the metal is, it's the same number as the Q value for the water. But here's the deal. Anything, if the water gains energy, its value of Q, which is energy, will be positive. If the metal loses energy, its value of Q will be negative. They're going to be opposites. Same number. If the metal loses one joule, water gains one joule. If the metal loses, metal loses 1,000 joules, the water gains 1,000 joules. But if it loses joules, it's going to have a negative sign on it. If this is gaining joules, it's going to have a positive sign on it. I'll be important when we get to the, the next bit. So, since I don't know Q of metal and I need Q of metal for this, I'm going to calculate instead the energy that the water gained and just put a negative sign on it. And I, why can I do that? Well, once again, let's see. Uh, uh, here we go. I'll use this. Q equals MC delta T. And look at the original question. Can I find the energy that the water gained in order to fill in that equation from earlier? Well, let's see. There's the mass of the water, so Q equals M. The specific heat capacity of water is given on the table at the top of your um, handout that you're going to get as part of the exam. In fact, it's a, it will be given to you. Specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius, so no need to memorize that. And then what's the delta T? Oh, look, you can get it from these numbers right here. So we can do that. Let's get the end. Let's calculate this so that we can get this, plug it into here, and then we'll be able to find the specific heat of the metal. So that we shall do. So Q equals MC delta T. So Q of water equals mass of water, specific heat of water, delta T of water. All right, so Q water equals, let's see, what was it? 100.0 grams times 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And then delta T of the water, what is the delta T of the water? Well, it said, delta T water, it, start, it ended at 38 degrees Celsius, th or sorry, 30.8 degrees Celsius, and it started at 21.1 degrees Celsius. Oops, ran out of space there, but all right. Which means the temperature change of the water was uh, plus 9.7 degrees Celsius. It went from this to this. That got 9.7 degrees warmer. 9.7 degrees Celsius. Well, okay, cool. Let's see, what's that come out to? 100.0. Times 4.184 times, what was that, 9.7? You get that whole thing. So Q water equals 4,058.48. That's what came out of the calculator. And what are the units? Grams cancel grams. Degree Celsius cancels degree Celsius. Joules. Because Q is energy. Um, this is, technically it should be rounded to, let's see, four decimals. Ignore temperature, four decimals. Technically, it should be rounded one, two, three, four decimals. So it should be rounded here to 4,058, but we're not done with the question yet, so I'm not going to round till the end. So anyway, if Q of water equals that, that means the water gained this many joules. Therefore, Q metal equals negative 4,058.48 joules. Let's get that on screen.
This gives me what I need to finish off the calculation bit I was working on earlier. So let's go ahead and do that. So finishing off that calculation bit from earlier, we, as a reminder, wanted to do find the specific heat of the metal, and this is the equation for it. C metal, as derived earlier, is Q metal over M metal delta T metal. So energy of the metal divided by the mass times the change in temperature of the metal. So we calculated just now energy of the metal is that. So negative 4,058.48 joules divided by, what's the mass? 7.5 grams. What's the delta T? We got that earlier. As a reminder, there it is. Negative 169.2 degrees Celsius. And then when you calculate all that out, which I shall do right now, let's see what it comes out as. So you have 4,058.48 divided by 7.5 times negative 169.2. Equals 3.198171. 789 blah 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 and let's not forget units joules per gram degree Celsius which is exactly the units a specific heat capacity value is supposed to have but not done yet because we need a round so this number has a bunch of digits this number has two digits we ignore temperature in fact, honestly, what we want to do is go back and look at the original question to see what we use that's going to decide how we round. So this number only has two digits. Ignore temperature. Four digits because if there's a decimal, all the zeros count. Um, at least all the zeros, if for a number is greater than one, count. Um, ignore temperature. So this is going to limit how we round our final answer. This has two digits. Therefore, our final answer will be rounded to two digits. So one digit, two digit, we need to round it. The final answer here. So we're going to say the final answer is three, oops, 3.2 joules per gram degree Celsius. Some fictional number I made up, so I don't think any metal actually has this. But regardless, it shows you the process of how you calculate it. So there we go. That's the answer to how we go about finding the specific heat value of a mystery metal by heating it up and dropping it into water. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Happy studies.